as we continue our European swing. It takes us to one of the well-represented countries of NASA Rallycross, which is Germany. On the driver front, the country is well represented. 60 race wins, 8 championships across multiple drivers, but on the race front, eh, it's not so much. Much like its Formula One counterpart, the venues have had issues with consistently having contracted races, with funding, with all that fun stuff, but this season is different. We return to the Olympia Park in Munich, Germany, as we are getting ready for the fourth race here in Munich and the second race of the 2019 B NASA Rallycross Challenge season. In those past three races, we've had three different winners, unless you're Cody Erdman, which in his opinion, he should have won all three races. The two-time champion clicks with this circuit, but was defeated in the closing laps of both of the races by Chris Wetz and compatriot Dylan Smith. As it's Josh Mertz bringing you the call, as always, for the Automotive Sports Network, Dylan Smith, speaking of, even though we are focused on Erdman in this little intro piece, Dylan Smith is a second faster, basically, than the rest of the field. It's the first race for the Honda program this season, both Brandon Lambert, Dylan Smith returning. And if we look at this timing and scoring, 47, 51.56, or um, 760 versus Philip Krause, a 52.204, half a second faster. And you'll notice that our defending last week's race winner, Josh Mertz, is nowhere to be found. He's a second slower, not sure what's going on in the Subaru camp because the 19 and the 52, they're blitzed away from their teammate. They're up in second and third, and the 81 is struggling. It's Cody Erdman, like I mentioned, making his return as well in the NASA Rallycross Challenge this season. The Victor Valley holds the blue plate and holds the winner sticker as he won last week in Crawford Privateers. Mertz holds the red plate and the red winner sticker. He's the overall points leader and the overall race winner from last week. We'll jump into the format real quick before we get through to the first quarterfinal. Two quarterfinals here in Munich, Germany. Six laps apiece. You have to take a drug lap once, so we're going to have ten cars. So each race will have five cars. The winner will transfer and get two bonus points. On these races, you cannot take the Joker on the first lap of the race. So remember that for future races. The semifinals, two races, four cars each, four laps, you have to take the Joker once. So the winner transfers again and get a bonus point. LCQ is going to be six cars for three laps, and you have to take the Joker once. The top two transfers, so we're going to have six cars in this final. It's going to be very tricky, very interesting to see what privateer, what manufacturer mix are going to make it. But if the Honda program is any indication, it's going to give the Subarus and the Mitsubishis a, ru a run for their money. As actually entry blank last second, I stand corrected. We have nine cars getting ready to take part. Dylan Livingood has a provisional as uh, they just tap me on my shoulder while we're going through this. So no Livingood tonight. He's going to finish 10th. He'll get a provisional for that. So we're going to have nine cars take part here in Germany. Quarterfinal one in Munich, Germany. Dylan Smith, Brandon Lambert, Victor Valley, Cody Erdman. Start is good. And Jacob Krause, Erdman leads. Or sorry, that is, that's Dylan Smith. I'm so used to the Repsol car being Erdman. Plexus car of Jacob Krause had some issues into turn one. Dylan Smith leads over his teammate. Cody Erdman in third, battling with Valley. Through the tricky turn, one and two. Now onto the dirt. There's a lot of dirt here in Munich, Germany. Side by side, Erdman with Valley. And through the left-hander. Onto the back straightaway, over the jump, past the pit gantries. It's going to be the two Hondas leading the Subaru and the Mitsubishi. And Dylan Smith has been certainly quick all day long in the 47, making his return in over 40 races. Actually, make that 60 races since his last race. It's been since about 2017A, I'd want to say. Japan, I think, was his last race. End of one. 47 leads. Joker's allowed. Side by side, Erdman with Lambert. This does not help either of them because they cannot transfer by finishing second. Erdman passes the 46. So the inaugural champion of the NASA Rally Cross Challenge gets passed by the two-time champion. But they're getting blitzed by the five-time race winner, Dylan Smith. We remember he ran way back in 2012. He ran, won for MRT. He's won for Revolution Racing. He's won for Area 52, which was Erdman's own team. But LMT has been the one manufacturer team which hasn't really been able to break through. 
as Area 52 does have a driver's championship with Philip Krause back in 2017B. But LMT has never been able to run a Warning full season. 52 track limits. Jokering is the 47, so two, well. 47 leads. Thought the 52 was. Valiant Lambert here beating and banging in the quarterfinal. As they've had an interesting little battle. This is for third. It really doesn't solve any problems. As Jacob Krause in the 42 struggling. Mounting the curb was the five of Valley. 51.942 to a 53.487 for Erdman versus Dylan Smith. Over the jump. And down to the hairpin again. We're coming across flags here in Munich, Germany. And this track is very interesting because it's a lot like Croft because, yes, you obviously race people on the same path. The dust out of the hairpin's awful. But you're kind of running your own race because it's so it's so spread out. It's so and Mickey Mouse. Three 47 leads cross flags. So Dylan Smith, 53.823. Erdman was three tenths of a second faster that lap, but he hasn't taken his Joker lap, I don't think. So it's all down to consistency. It's all down to this first corner. First corner is very tricky. Lambert loops it in the 46. As Valley in third, the privateer Mitsubishi had a great run in Croft last week. And Erdman in the second position. Dylan Smith. 51.942 is the fastest lap. So he was the only one to joker because Erdman's fastest lap's at 53.487. So unless Erdman aces his joker lap, we're not going to really see that much of a change. And Erdman's not jokering yet. So I think he's trying to gain all the delta he can on the regular course. 47 leads. 53.6 to a 53.6. It was 300 slower for Erdman. So he's not making any gap for um, taking this lead, it's all going to be down to making sure he can maintain the delta or try and gain that delta back. And notice how tricky this course is because it's obviously it's all dirt and it's so dry in Munich, Germany. Uh, Croft was, was a very wet style track. The United Kingdom, obviously, it rains a lot there, so there's no real dust to be kicked up. But here, it's so dry, you can tell by the grass that's a little, a little dry there. Um, but the dust is kicked up in the corners because it, it piles up, and it's just not fun. Erdman Jokers, what is this going to do to the Delta? 47 leads, white flag. It doesn't do anything. He gets a little close, but 54-473, he was half a second slower on his Joker lap than Dylan Smith, and that half a second was probably that entire gap that we see. So the gap was narrowed, but it's not going to solve any problems for the 52. These two still battling for third. They've been beating and banging all race long. Valley versus Lambert. But it's Dylan Smith and Cody Erdman. And Lambert vaults the curve there in the 46. And Jacob Krause struggling in the 42. A little bit of time, 47. Dylan Smith runs it wide, or sorry, cuts the corner in the hairpin. This is going to give Erdman a shot. He peeks to the outside in the 52. Will he send it on the 47 on the outside? That's not the preferred groove through the final corner. He got really close, but Dylan Smith is going to win Check the first quarterfinal in Germany. Quarter final one, transferring. As Erdman second, third 52, Valley, five, fourth. 46 and 42. Lambert, fifth, Jacob Kraus. That was close. I fucking, I downshifted. One too many, and it threw me loose. Second quarterfinal in Munich. Philip Kraus, Chris Wetz, Noah Carmichael, and Josh Mertz for six laps. Green flag. Off the line, the MRT teammates. At the line, it was Kraus oh, over fuck. his teammate. I'm sorry. I thought I was clear. And That's Mertz gets turned by Carmichael, but he thought he was clear. You heard him on the scanner. I thought the spotter cleared me, I'm sorry. As Kraus holds the lead, Wets in second, yeah, third is Mertz. View. My field of view changed last week and I can't see. Fourth is Noah Carmichael. Leading is Kraus. We know Mertz is struggling in the 81, off pace this weekend, but it's not uncommon for him. He knows that Munich is a terrible track. 
as he's always been off pace. We remember 2016A when Jonathan Taylor and him had a scrap going into turn one. That wasn't a fun race for him either. So it's all about maximizing points. Philip Krause will lead at the end of the first lap in car number 19. End of one, 19 lead. Go for the load. As Wet's in second. Third is Mertz. Fourth is Carmichael. 54, 389, 55, 781, 56, 4 to a one minute five. But we know Carmichael had spun it. Through turns three, turn four. Turn five, it's such a tricky circuit to get right. And when do you get it right? Whenever you get it right, it is very rewarding, but it's so hard to get this track right. Because in the hairpin, you have to go from fourth to first. The car digs from the right front, and then you gotta plant it and hope it sticks. Because remember, these cars are not four-wheel drive anymore. They are rear-wheel drive. So it's so hard to drive them and get it right. Krause through the final corner, still holds the lead. Mertz is going to joker on the and second lap. First opportunity. I don't know if that's a good idea for Mertz. As Wetz is going to be battling him. He's going to be giving up all his delta. There, there it is. 54 flat. 54-7. 54-7. So it's a 7 tenths of a second delta. But we know the 81's off pace, so we'll have to see the 19 to what, uh, what lap he runs on the joker. But the joker rotation does nothing for the six-time champion. Has Kraus, Wetz, Mertz, and Carmichael. Carmichael 53-7, so I think he even ran a faster lap than the 81. So that's interesting to see as the privateer effort on pace today in Germany. Let's see who will joker coming across flags nobody does we know Wetz takes his joker in the last lap of the race we'd like to think that Kraus is going to cover Wetz in the 71 54 4 5 7 Wetz is last lap Wetz is fastest lap Kraus hits the berm there 54 5 5 5 his fastest lap is a 54 3 8 9 we're on board car number 19 we're on board the 71 for there for just a moment there and all the dust that's kicked up from these cars is immense. Front bumper of the 71, front bumper of the 81. You're going to sail the car into the corner. Hopefully it sticks in the middle and then power it off. But it's so hard to do as we come to two laps to go here in Germany. Wetz does not joker, so Kraus. And uh, four, 19 leads. One of these guys is going to have to make a differing strategy, and I don't think Wetz has the pace over Kraus. 54-474. Actually, he does. Makes me a liar. 54-221, and Mertz a 54-565. So, Wetz, we know that Kraus, or Wetz, sorry, is going to joker on the last lap of the race. So, if Kraus wants to play it safe, he can just joker on the last lap of the race, unless he wants to switch it up, because if he does not joker, maybe Wetz will try and cover him off and do the undercut on the strategy. Because as we've known for the last seven years, if you follow the guy into the, into the joker, you're not going to be able to make any time up. And just like we say on the Solstice Racing broadcasts, rally crosses, jokers are like stock car racing's pit stops. If you pit, you have to make sure you take advantage of the clear track. And that's the same thing as the joker. We've heard that. I've, heard, I've said that phrase numerous times. Kraus jokers. He's going to cover off Wetz. So you're going to make sure that he gets the Joker Delta, which obviously he has. 54-2-7-2-0, his fastest lap and the fastest on the circuit. Put that into perspective, Mertz ran a 54 flat. So 1.3 seconds faster. So that's a proper Delta time as Wetz ran a 53-9. Through turn five, onto the back straightaway, past the pit gantries. As car number 19 looks to potentially take the fight to car number 47. He won seeding last week, won the first quarter final. Was a little bit off pace on Dylan Smith. If the lap times were any indication, it might be an MRT battle for a second. But we have a couple more races to go. Kraus is going to go around the final corner. Wet Jokers, it's not going to do anything. Kraus wins quarterfinal two. 71. 81-18. As Mertz and Carmichael third Set and fourth. Setup's a joke. So, best done finishing is probably fourth. 
Uh, everybody's good. Four laps. Joker ones. Semifinal A in Munich. Erdman, Lambert, Valley. Jacob Kraus, green flag, off the line. Valley got a terrible start. Three wide, Erdman, Lambert, Kraus into turn one. We're really going to focus on the manufacturer cars here today. Lambert and Erdman, let's see who will get the jump into turn one. We know Valley and Lambert had a decent battle in the quarterfinal, and they're going to be battling side by side through turn three. Into turn four, into the dirt. Erdman leads over Lambert. As over the mounds, Lambert runs it wide. Valley gets close. Will Valley go to the inside? He does. I don't know if he's going to stick it on the very inside to try and make the pass. Lambert runs it wide in the 46. As they come together again, the 5 and the 46 turns him, but he keeps him straight. No penalty. And it looks like Valley almost basically doored him. I don't know if that was intentional that or not. Urban loves Clarice it, though. Dirty as fuck behind you. You're, you're clear End for of a one, mile, 52 leads, Joker's allowed. Radio communication from Kraus to Erdman. They were racing dirty. Lambert got the better um, better end of the stick on that one. As now Valley runs it, tries to take the fight. Lambert ran it wide. These guys are battling like it's the last lap of the final. And I I don't know why they're racing like this because they're they're giving Erdman this quarterfinal, this semifinal, sorry, win. As Valley third, Kraus fourth, Lambert second, Erdman. Let's go on board on the rear bumper. Let's see how far ahead he is. Now they're just coming out of the hairpin. He's a full straightaway ahead. 53.993 was his fastest lap. Obviously, that was the, the only lap. The first lap, we'll have to see when it refreshes. He will take to the Joker on the second lap of the race. Cross and flags. 52.3. Two Let's see what Valley runs. 53.4, Lambert. 54-3. These guys battling for second. As Lambert gives the five a bump. Into turn four. He's going to take to the inside. They're going to be side by side again. Into turn four. Into turn five. As Lambert gets by Valley. What a battle between these guys for the second spot here in Germany. Running it wide again as Lambert's got such an odd line, but that's definitely not the line he wants. Maybe it worked. It did. He ran it wide, trying to take the fight to Valley, and it's going to put him back side and by side. 52 leads, cross flags. As Erdman takes the white flag, Lambert ran it wide in the penultimate corner, but he's going to joker, so that's going to benefit him. As timing and scoring gets it wrong, it is the white flag. Er Lambert takes second. As he cuts down on Valley, blocks him in the five. And he's going to run that wide line and try and take the fight again. But Valley holds second. Vector is really lucky. Our rules only 90 degrees. Side by side again are the 5 and the 46. As Valley nearly hits him and ramps the curb in the, in the Mitsubishi there. Well, I would, I would penalize you, but you kind of penalize yourself. As I think timing and scoring is about to call him to three laps to go, but this is the white flag and Erdman. Erdman wins the semifinal yeah, in Germany. End of four. 52 leads. Isn't it only four? As Lambert second, Valley third. It's only four, right? Yeah. Should oh, be fourth four. is Jacob Gosh. Krause. Oh, yeah. oh, my bad. Check it flag. I'm an idiot. Yeah. I've been so focused on this battle, I forgot we're in a semifinal. My bad, guys. God. Semifinal B. Four lap stroke wants. Wets, Mertz, Carmichael. Winner transfers. Green flag. Hey, Phil, you want to count for this? Oh, yeah, sure. Mertz <sighs> leads at the start finish line. Wets in second. Carmichael in third. They came together in the quarterfinal. No such issue this time. Into t actually, they, t they do bump in turn one, so I stand correct, actually, turn two. Into turn three, Wetz leads Mertz. As Wetz a former winner here, Mertz has never won here. I don't think he's ever been on the podium at this track. Due to how off pace the 81 is, Carmichael in third. It's going to be interesting when the Subaru mechanics go back and study the data to see where the 81 is giving up pace. It doesn't look like he is now. 
as Wetz is leading, and he's getting very close to the 71. Into the penultimate corner, into the final corner to end the first lap in the semifinal. Wetz leads Mertz leads. and Carmichael. 55-5 to a 54-8. 56-2. Into turn one. Wetz runs it wide. Different lines than the 81. He's trying something different. Running a very smooth line is the 81. To get try and get some pace, but I don't think it's working. Into the hairpin. Much shallower line for the 81. Wetz opens it up, opens the spot up, side by side for a moment, exiting the corner. Coming to two to go. We've seen historically Wetz also back the pace up to the 81. We saw that in Canada a couple seasons, actually not a End couple seasons two, ago. 71. Over two years ago. Cross flex. Two laps to go. Mertz ran the He's fastest lap. 54-4. Because he doesn't joke until the end. 54-6. There's no gap between these guys, so we're going to have to see who's going to crack on the strategy. Will it be Wetz or Mertz? We can basically tell you that it's going to be the 81. Like we say, every single race, every single show, basically five times a race that Wetz historically jokers on the last lap of the race. It's such a strat. It's, it's no strategy, really, because you know that the 71 is going to joker late. Off the hairpin, coming to the final couple of corners to end the second lap. Nearly make contact there, the 81 and the 71. Merch jokers, as Wetz, I thought, was going to joker. White flag. Wetz in second, third is Carmichael. 53-115, 54-643, and Mertz ran it wide oh, entering yeah, turn three. one. 81. This might white have sealed flag. it. There's yeah, no gap flag. between these guys now. I was too caught up with the battle. There's a lot of radio chatter between from race control. Mertz leads Wetz, car length and a half. There's no delta. Between them, he lost it entering turn one. Carmichael third, Wet second, Mertz leads off the hairpin. This is going to be an easy win for Wetz, I have to say, unless he bins it in the final corner. From high above, Wetz is going to joker in the 71, and that's going to seal it. Wetz wins. wins. I knew I should have joker. God damn it. I mean, it wasn't the Joker. You just fucking sucked on the last lap. No offense. I can't run behind up in front. LCQ time in Munich. There's two there, champions there's in this race. Oh, He's in this race. Okay, and then the privateers. It. Lambert, Mertz, Valley, Kraus, and Carmichael. So the two points leaders are in the LCQ along with the inaugural series champion. This is going to be interesting. Valley misses That's the good. start. Green flag. Off the line, Mertz leads at the start-finish line. We know that means nothing. Lambert into turn one. Mertz second. Carmichael in third. Fourth is Valley for a moment as they nudge into the corner. Lambert and Mertz trying to pull away. Penalty box, 81. Penalty box, 81, yeah. And he turns Actually, him and stops that's and that's right in front of the field. field. Yeah, red flag. Not sure what happened there, but the 81 parks in the middle of the racing line. I think this is how the rule goes. Uh, 81, make sure you line up on the back row of the grid. Yeah, I know, I know. And it is all... I don't know what happened to my fucking field of view, but it, it went away, and it's not the same as last week, so I can't see, and it's whatever. I don't know how that software works, but usually you can reset it. It is... I did. I can't for an hour. Snowballing. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't they changed that before the final last week. I don't know how, I don't know why. That's one of my fears with the VR. That's why I go don't into your grand with it. Go into the same boxes you went into before. Unless you're the eighty one. You can change your gate. You can change your gate. Okay, never mind. I just know the last time we didn't change gates. <sighs> Alright. Actually hold up. Hey uh, uh no, too late? you're in here too, never mind. Is it too late? I might just too late. Too late. Oh. All right.
Three laps, a Joker once. Restarting Up the LCQ transfer. in Munich, Germany. It has been snowballing for the 81, so it's going to be a long road for him to get into the final, but we'll have to see. Start is good. Green flag. Lambert leads going into turn one, three wide with Carmichael, Valley, and Kraus. As Mertz runs it into the side of Valley and around he goes. And that. That one's on the five. Came over into the 81 slot. <sighs> Had a That's lap. it. Penalty box number five. D last week's winner is out. I'll keep the server up. Of the Someone final. Sal, I muted. muted. He's out of the final for the first time since 2017A Watkins Glen. Lambert leads over Carmichael now. Kraus in third, fourth is Valley. Valley's going to have to penalty box, so both points leaders, unless something catastrophic goes wrong, will be out of the final. It's going to be up to Jacob Kraus to try and dethrone Noah Carmichael as Lambert leads at the end of the first lap. As what a turn of events here in Munich. As we know the 81 has been off pace, but it's snowballed, and the points leader will definitely not hold the red plate going into Barcelona next week. As Lambert 54853, Carmichael 55670, and Jacob Kraus 57204. As over the scanner, Kraus is trying to set, tell his teammate you shouldn't have parked because you could have gotten Valley. Valley had to penalty box. Lambert runs it wide in the 46. He's going to cut the corner there a little bit. As Carmichael trying to follow him home. We're coming to the white flag here in the LCQ for Brandon Lambert and Noah Carmichael. As Carmichael, if he gets into the final, as Jacob Krause loops it in the final corner there, white flag for Lambert. If Carmichael can hold on, he will instantly be a race winner for the Privateer Cup. And that's what he needs to get into the championship. Activated. Lambert, Carmichael. Kraus, Valley, and Mertz in ninth, Living Good in tenth. Remember, Living Good, not here, had to get a provisional entry. Off of turn five, down the back straightaway for the final time in the last chance qualifier. It's going to be Brandon Lambert leading Noah Carmichael. And the inaugural champion, along with the last privateer champion, bringing it home to fill out the grid for the German Grand Prix. Lambert. Carmichael, easy run flag. to the checkered oh flag. Go, 36 wins the LCQ. Go, yes. 18 oh. transfers. Carmichael threw along with Lambert. 42 finishes 7th. I got it. Five. Okay, okay. I thought you were gone. 7th Kraus, 8th Valley, 9th Mertz. Both points leaders and both defending race winners back. are out of the final. Park it when the race is over, please. Joker twice. Good luck, gentlemen. Getting ready for the German Grand Prix. Green flag off the line. Smith, Kraus, Erdman, Wetz, Carmichael, and Lambert. Carmichael wins the privateer race automatically. Erdman way outside, and it's going to be a battle between MRT and LMT to see who can dethrone Dylan Smith. Three wide for a moment. It was Lambert, Erdman, and Carmichael. Lambert backed out of it. Goes side by side. Transponder issues on the 46, and it sends the 18 out oh. wide. Lambert, you're warping. Yeah. Race. Oh, uh, bad. I'm going to go for a ride, but call me after a race. Calm down. No, back up. And back down. I hate this fucking internet. Um... Second and third, Kraus and Erdman. Fourth box, is Lambert. Fifth is Wetz. Dylan Smith leads. That's kind of ridiculous, but okay. Because the 18 is now pretty far. Dylan Smith out. leads at the end of the first lap. Like he got he turned around. Left. End of one, 47 Goodbye. leads. And what will the MRT boys do to respond to Dylan Smith? As Kraus runs such an interesting line into the corner. But it's not going to solve any problems. 53668, 54583. Whatever. Yeah, I don't care. You don't have to penalize him because I know it's a warp wreck. As Dylan Smith leads, Kraus is second. Third is Erdman. Erdman, we know, can be on pace here. So can Wetz, but both of these guys are off pace compared to the 47 of Dylan Smith. 
what has clicked inside of Dylan Smith to randomly show up and be leading by such a huge margin. He's done this before. We remember, I believe it was 2015 B, it was Valgensward, and then he did it again here in 2017 A. End of two, 47 leads. 51 7 8 2 as he takes his Joker. 53 7 6 1 for Kraus. So it's a two second a lap delta if you get it right. A huge gap for these guys, but they have not jokered yet, so we'll have to see when the joker rotation happens. End of three, 47 leads. 54-5, 53-3, so Kraus was faster than him. The gap has shrank a little bit, 53-1, so the MRT teammates are coming. They have not jokered yet. And Lambert, 54-1, Wetz, 54-1, Carmichael, 53-8. So interestingly, if I take a glance through here, Dylan Smith was the slowest car last lap. But because he took his joker early on, that's how the strategy's unraveling. Like I said in the pre-race show, like I said in the quarterfinal, it's going to be hard for Dylan Smith to be beaten. He's got such a huge pace advantage, and we can't figure out why. But Honda certainly has aced this. And what's interesting is they've been in NASA Rallycross now since 2017. Both MRT teammates are going to joker at End the same four, time. 47 leads, white flag, or sorry, cross flags, cross flags. 53-1, 52-4, 52-4. They ran identical lap times. The Honda program has never won a NASA Rallycross race overall. They've won a couple privateers, obviously, with Carmichael. They've won a couple privateers with Valley, but they've never won an overall race. And now you've got the 80 plus wins off the top of my head, Goliath, that is Subaru. Subaru has won a basically, I'd say, the last three seasons worth of races with the Gen 4, with that WRX, with the Gen 3, with this Impreza WRX. This program has been well defined and well refined to win every single race. Urban Jokers again, his strategy completes. He gets close to his former teammate, but not close enough. And a five, 47 leads. Three laps to go in the German Grand Prix. 53-5 to a 52-3, but they can't get close. Urban strategy's done now. So that's the gap that he doesn't have over Dylan Smith. I think what won this race, if the race were to end right now, was Dylan Smith's first joker. He jokered immediately when he could, and it opened up the gap. When the tires were fresh. Because we don't talk about tire wear and tire use because of how the dirt is. But these tires still get abused and they warm up. And when they warm up, obviously you're not going to have that much grip when they overheat. And the way these cars are driven, it's easy to overheat your tires and not have any grip. Two to go for Dylan Smith. Will Krause Joker, he will and not. Six, 47 leads. I think he's going to try his strategy in the last couple laps to pip his teammate. I think he knows that he's not going to have anything over Dylan Smith. Erdman, Kraus, Wetz and Lambert have been battling all race long. This is for the fourth position right off the podium. We'll have to see if Lambert can try and get closer to his teammate. They've been running identical lap times. Remember Noah Carmichael running his own little race. Aside from the fact that Lambert and him came together in turn three, Carmichael's the only privateer in the race. Trip. Carmichael's the only privateer, so he's only had to worry about himself. He's going to get 20 points for that championship. Let's head back up front. Dylan Smith, the young German who won in 2012 for his first start seven years ago. And leads. Of seven, 47 leads, white flag. He was 13 when he won his first race in NASA Rallycross. He was the youngest winner. If I go back and do the stats, we'll have to see. I believe he is probably the youngest winner in NASA Rallycross Series history. 
but he's matured. He's grown up. And the drive like this, if he runs the full season, is the drive of a champion. And we know Dylan Smith has the pace to do it. He's got five race wins in NASA Rallycross. He wants to make that six. He wants to tie Tanner Smith for seventh all time. No relation for those two. And the MRT boys in the dominant package have had nothing. Dylan Smith on a triumphant, dominating return gives Honda... Hiatus. First win in NASA. Smith wins in Munich. Sixth win for Dylan Smith. Ahead of Cody Erdman and Philip Krauss rounding out the podium. Lambert, Wetz, and Carmichael is the rest of the final. Good win, buddy. Well deserved. You smoked Congrats, Dylan. Time. Sixth Good win. Run, Good run, Good and one. the first win for Honda. No one else did. I tried copying your uh, the way you're running the lines with the gear. But it, it kind of worked. It worked Four well tenths of a second faster. Guess who just shredded third gear at the finish? You did? Yeah, I just did. Nice. Um, I'm going to okay, fix so my uh, my field of view, hopefully. Okay, um, so because of uh, how the final ended, does that mean me and Victor are tied for the points now? As these guys get another moment to celebrate in NASA Rallycross, it was not a 1-2 finish. That has not come yet. But Honda, their first win in NASA Rallycross, like we mentioned a couple moments ago. The tires are so worn you can't even do a burnout. But these guys, well-deserved victory for Dylan Smith. And Brandon Lambert got very close as well as the Privateer winner. Also a Honda. So Honda wins overall and Privateers here in Munich, Germany, when the Subaru team could not respond. And the development of this Honda program has certainly been ramped up. As Dylan Smith, his sixth win in NASA Rallycross, ties him with Tanner Smith for seventh all-time on the wins list. LMT is now tied for fourth all-time on the wins list. In the team's winnings, they have eight wins. That puts Honda on the board with a win in the NASA Rallycross Challenge. But like I said, Subaru's got 81 wins, so that's a long wait for them. If we take a look at the Drivers' Championship exiting Munich and entering Barcelona, Spain, Philip Kraus with the two third place finishes will get the points lead and the red plate going into Barcelona. He's got a five point lead over his teammate who once again, like we mentioned, missed the final. As if this program for the Hondas keep up, we'll have to see if Dylan Smith and Lambert can take the fight to the MRT teammates, because we know all three of them are great at Barcelona, as we don't go too far to continue our European journey. As we hope you enjoyed today's coverage of the NASA Rallycross Challenge here on the Automotive Sports Network, and we hope to see you next week in Barcelona. But until then, congratulations to Dylan Smith, and so long, everyone.